Number three, which of the following atoms would be expected to form negative ions in binary ionic compounds and which would be expected to form positive ions? And then they give me the list of atoms. So P, I, M, G, C, L, I, N, C, S, O, P, B, N, C, O. Okay. Now, how are we going to figure out which ones are negative and which ones are positive? This comes from an oxidation trend. So I'll just put over here, this is our oxidation trend. So another trend that we have to memorize when we look at the periodic table. So just as a little backstory, when atoms bind, when all of these elements, and these as well, right? But when atoms bind, generally they always want to be one group of atom, and that's always the noble gases, right? The noble gases are high and mighty, they're noble, they are basically perfect, and everybody else wants to be just like this group. Well, how do they do that? They can either lose electrons or gain electrons. Remember, they will never ever lose or gain protons. It's always the electrons that they will lose or gain. So let's take, for example, fluorine. Fluorine, with its atomic number of nine, means that it has nine protons, but more importantly, it has nine electrons. How will fluorine become a noble gas? Well, if I just go over here, neon has 10 electrons. So all I would have to do is literally say, okay, well, I have nine electrons plus one electron to get 10. And voila, I'm kind of like a noble gas. So what did fluorine have to do? It just had to gain an electron. So that's why when they bind with compounds, it will be a negative one chart or trend. Negative one, remember, means that you actually gained one electron, right? So this whole group would be the same exact thing, right? Chlorine would gain one electron to become argon. Bromine would be one electron or gain one electron to become krypton, etc., etc. Oxygen and the whole entire group of oxygen will follow suit, and they would actually want to gain two electrons, right? From eight all the way to 10, that's a gain of two. 16 to 18, that's a gain of two. So this trend would be negative two, right? And the negative means that it's gaining. I just want to make sure that you guys understand that. Ni uh, nitrogen's group does the same thing. It's a negative three. Now, carbon, same thing. This is a negative four. But now look at what happens with this group here. Boron has two choices, and technically all atoms have two choices. How does it get to being neon, right? Or it could be, a, you know, helium as part of a noble gas. So if, if boron wants to gain electrons, it would have to gain five electrons from five all the way to 10. However, if it wants to be helium, noble gas, Boron would just have to lose three because from five to two is a loss of three. Which one is easier for boron to do? It's easier to actually lose three instead of gaining five. So now the trend is a plus three. And remember, plus means that you actually lost electrons. And then the trend continues. This would be a plus two because beryllium would just have to lose two electrons to become helium. A difference of two, right? Four to two, you just lose two. And then this would be plus one. And the noble gases, since they're already noble and high and mighty, this group is a zero charge. So remember that trend. Plus one for group one, plus two for group two, plus three for group three. And technically, 14 could be either plus or minus because it kind of meets in the middle. You could either gain four electrons or lose four electrons. It just depends on what other element it's being bound with. And then you definitely go down to negative. So negative three, negative two, negative one, and then finally zero. So for the first one, phosphorus, would this want to form a negative ion or would it want to form a positive ion? Well, phosphorus is right here. It's under nitrogen's group, and that group is always a negative three. So phosphorus would definitely want to be a negative 
ion, and more specifically, it's going to be a negative three ion. It will gain three electrons, because remember, the negative means gain. So P would be like a three minus or a negative three. That's how you would see it. So that answers this one. And now basically the other ones kind of follow suit. So we have iodine. Where is iodine? Iodine's over here. It's in the negative one category. So this would be a negative ion. And more specifically, it would be a negative one charge. And you would see it as something like this. Or sometimes you don't even have to write the one, but I'll put it there for you guys. Next one, Mg. Mg is in group two. So... Magnesium would easily, more easily, lose two electrons than gain six. So this would be a positive ion. And more specifically, it would want to form a plus two ion. So it would be Mg2+. You guys get the drift. Chlorine is over here. It's in the negative one category. So it would be a negative ion. More specifically, it would want to be a negative one. And if we had to write it, it would be like that. Indium, which is I-N, that's over here. It's in the positive three category, so this would be a cation. It would be a plus ion, more specifically plus three, and if you did have to write it, it would be going in the upper right-hand corner, just like that. Cesium, C-S. Cesium is over here. It's a plus ion. It will always want to form a plus one charge, so when we do write that, it would look like that. Oxygen, let's see, where can I write this? I guess I'll write it over here. Oxygen is over here. It's in the negative two category. It would want to gain two electrons. So this would form a negative ion. More specifically, it would be a negative two. And if we wanted to write it, it would be like that. And, you know, you guys can write these as negative two. I just have a habit of writing the number first and then the negative. It doesn't really matter, though. Next is PB, lead. And PB is over here, right? And I see that it's either a plus four or a minus four. However, we have to look at what lead actually is. Lead is a metal, right? It's in yellow, which means that it's a metal. And what do we know about metals? Metals generally lose electrons, while nonmetals always gain electrons. So if that's the case, which one out of these two would lead want to follow? Would it be a plus four or would it be a minus four? It would be a plus four because metals lose electrons. That means that it would be a cation, a plus charge. Nonmetals would always be the negative charge. So in this case, it would act as the plus ion, and it would be a plus four specifically, so you would see Pb, four plus at the top. And then last but not least, we have cobalt, CO, and cobalt is right here. Now, however, we can't guesstimate what the charge is because there's no trend for transition metals. Transition metals have many different states that they transition to, hence why there's no trend for it. But going back to what we said about lead, cobalt is also a metal. So what can we say? Metals technically lose electrons, so they would be positive. So this would be a positive ion. Do we specifically know what charge cobalt could be? Not right now, but cobalt I think has plus two charges, plus one charges, probably plus the, so just know that this one is just a plus charge, yeah? So it'd be a positive ion. And just know that positive ions are cations, that's just the technical term for it, and negative ions are called anions. So I would memorize this little standard. It would help you out a lot moving forward, all right? So... That answers all these questions. This one's done. We could check this one off. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hopefully, hopefully this helped. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you like. That would help us out a lot. Thank you for that. I'll see you guys all in the next question. I think it's just like this. So if you need more problem, hang tight. I'll see you in number four. All right. Bye-bye.